Hey, this is a walkthrough for Philip Newman's puzzle Playing Gooseberry, which was originally posted as a gas on December 27th, 2023. This one is a little bit spicier than usual for gas, so I'm going to slow it down a bit and try to explain my exact thought process as I work through it. It's a killer Sudoku, so we'll be following standard Sudoku rules, meaning that we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3 by 3 region. Killer Sudoku rules are this. We have some outlined cages in the grid, which are outlined with dotted lines. Each of these has a little numerical clue written in the top left corner. That tells you the sum of the digits that go into that cage. So for instance, the sum of these three digits has to be eight. You'll also see if you look at the rules that it specifies digits and cages can't repeat. That's a standard rule in Killer Sudoku. In this puzzle, it's not going to be relevant at all because all of our cages exist either completely within one row or completely within one column. So Sudoku rules wouldn't allow you to do repeats anyways, but that's worth keeping in mind in general for, for Killer Sudoku where the cages have a more wiggly or bent shape or move between different boxes. So there's a question that I hear people ask quite a bit. And that is when somebody is really fast at solving Killer Sudoku, People ask often, have you memorized the killer cage combinations or what is your secret to working them out really quickly? Or do I need to memorize all of the possible combinations for these cages in order to solve this puzzle as fast as you? And there's a two part answer to that. So I solve a lot of killer Sudoku. It's one of my favorite variants. And for me, part of the story is that by solving a lot of killer, you do end up with a familiarity with certain cages that setters like to use very, very frequently because they're very likely to lead to kind of a cute or a useful resolution. So you'll see them quite often in puzzles. Often cages that are already a bit restricted that only have a couple of possibilities will show up over and over in puzzles. And this eight cage with a three in it, eight cages and three cells are one really good example of this. And so in a way that is memorization. It's not necessarily intentional memorization. I'm not sitting down and doing flashcards, but in a way, a lot of why I'm fast at this stuff is because I am familiar with which features setters like to put into Killer Sudoku. And once those are old friends, you'll see them and immediately know what to do with them. However, there are also a lot of cages that I don't know the combinations for off the top of my head. I mean, if you asked me list the possibilities for a 15 cage and three cells with two um, with a two in it, I would not be able to just casually tell you that. I would need to sit and think about it. It's not something I have memorized. So when we get to that cage and when we get to other cages like that in this puzzle, I will also walk you through how I approach something like that that is not an old friend to me. But usually better to start with the old friends. So let's start with this eight cage. So eight and three cells, there are two possibilities, and this is something I have memorized. One, two, and five, and one, three, and four. Only one of those has a three in it. So in this puzzle, we have to be in the one, three, four universe. I like to, wherever possible, follow up on the deductions that I've made. Gas puzzles are usually designed to allow you to do that. So let's continue across this row and look at this 14 cage. So this is not a cage that I have memorized in any sense. So I'll show you what I'd do instead. I look at the 14, I see it has a two in it. 14 minus two tells me that this sum has to be 12, these two cells. And 12 and two is something I know or something that at the very least I could work out quickly. There are three possibilities for it and each of them has a low digit and a high digit. So your low digit for 12 and two is either three, four or five. Your high digit for 12 and two is either seven, eight or nine. Now I already have a three and four in this row. So my low digit must be five. I must be in the five plus seven universe. So I'll mark in a five and seven. That leaves me with six, eight, and nine to fill out this row. I'm looking at this nine cage. Okay, I can't put an eight in a three cell nine cage because that would give me a minimum sum of eight, one, and two, which is 11. Nine is even bigger. This must be a six. And in fact, one thing that as you do more killer Sudoku, you'll start to think of as an old friend is that the biggest digit you can ever put into a three cell nine cage is six. And often that will be used in killer puzzles to create this restriction. So this is the one, two, six universe. Now we're solving gas. So let's look for symmetry. Gas is not always or even often fully symmetrical, but some of them are. And very often there are kind of symmetrical moves that you can make, especially at the beginning of the puzzle. So it's always worth checking for. 
And in this puzzle, it's going to reward us big time. 22 and 3. That's another one that's an old friend to me. But even if it wasn't, I'll show you what you could do. So 22, suppose I did not know what the totals for this were. So 22 minus 7 is 15. So I'm going to have to say, what, what is 15 in two cells? Well, 15 in two cells I can work out is either 6 plus 9 or 7 plus 8. Can't use 7 plus 8 here because then I would be repeating a second 7 in this cage. So this has to be a 6 plus 9, and because I've placed a 6 up here already, I can determine the order. 16 in three cells, that's not what I know. So I'm going to subtract the 8 and say these two cells have to sum to 8. So that's either 1 plus 7, no good because there's a 7 in the row. 2 plus 6, no good because there's a 6 in the row. So it's 3 plus 5. My remaining three cells are 1, 2, and 4. And again, I happen to know off the top of my head, just from doing a lot of these, that the smallest digit I can ever put into a three-cell 21 cage is 4. Even if you don't know that off the top of your head, take 21, subtract 9. That gives you 12. I can't make a 12 using a, using a 1 or a 2, because that would require the other digit to be an 11 or a 10. So my other digit has to be a 4 and an 8. Now we can do a little cleanup with Sudoku. So this 8 makes this a 9 and an 8. The 4 here makes this a 1 and a 4. The 2 here makes this a 1 and a 2. Now I'm going to look at the other cages, because nothing immediately jumps out at me as being heavily restricted. This 15 seems to me that it's going to need two fairly big digits in it, and this one seems like it's going to need two fairly small digits in it, and I don't have a lot of restrictions on big digits over here or on small digits over here, so I'm going to leave those. This is very kind of medium. These two digits are going to have to sum to 11. There are a lot of ways to make 11, so that's probably not the next place to go. Probably the same thing down here. There are a lot of ways to make 9 and 2 cells to finish out this 18. So I'll table that for now, too. That leaves me with these cages, which is what's going to be useful next. So 10 cage with 4 in it. Take 10, subtract 4. That gives me 6. How do I make 6 in my two remaining cells? Well, 2 and 4 is not possible because I'd be repeating the 4. So let's go for 1 and 5, the only other way to do it. There's already a 1 up here, so that tells me the order. Similarly here, 20 minus 6 is 14. Okay, how do I make 14 in two cells? 5 and 9, that's valid. 6 and 8, not going to work for multiple reasons, including that there's an 8 over here. The 2 over here also got rid of my 2-4 case. I didn't even notice that when I was solving. So this has to be a 5-9 pair to finish off my 20. And that seems to have unlocked something, because... Where I only had a single 1 up here before, now I have a pair of 1s. And where I only had a single 9 down here, now I have a pair of 9s. And so by Sudoku, I can now place a 9 here, and I can place a 1 down here. That makes these regions start to look a lot more promising. I'm going to start looking at this 12 cage now with an eye to figuring out what digit can go in this cell. So what are my remaining digits in this region? I still need a 3, a 4, a 6, and an 8. These digits can't be 8 by Sudoku. Those digits can't be 4 by Sudoku, just because I have an 8 and a 4 down here. So that leaves me with 3, 4, or 6. Now, I have a 12 cage, I have a 1 in it. I subtract that off, and that tells me that these two are going to sum to 11. So how do I make a sum of 11 here? 3 plus 8? No good, because I already have an 8 in the column. So that can't be a 3. 4 plus 7? That's possible. 6 plus 5? Not possible because I have a 5 in the column already. So I actually know now how to make this 12 cage. That restricts this column pretty heavily, and I'm seeing this 2 here in a new light now because that 2 now tells me that 2 can't go in those positions. So to place a 2 into the column, it can only go there. And so the remaining two digits here are 3 and 6. Let's do the symmetrical move. So in this region down here, I need to place a 2, 4, 6, and 7. Now, I get a little help from this 12 cage that I didn't get when I was up here. Now I have a 2, 4 pair, which makes this a 6, 7 pair. And I'll take a moment, actually, and observe that this 6, 7 pair makes this a 3. Now, this is either 6 or 7. This is 9. So my total that I have here is either 15 or 16. So this has to be 2 or 3. Can't be 2. So it's 3. 3, 6, and 9 gives us 18. The last remaining digit in this column is a 5. And now all I have as far as variant deductions is to figure out what goes into these two 15 cages. So let's work that out the same way that we did these two cages. So this region contains one of those cells. 
what digits do I have remaining in this region? So five, six, eight, and nine. Can't place a nine here. That doesn't help me with this cell, so let's figure this out. So 15 minus two is 13. So I need these two cells to sum to 13. Let's just walk through the possibilities. Five and eight is good. Six and seven is good. Eight and five is not good because there's a five in this region. And nine and four is my remaining possibility. So I just worked through that. And what you should be observing now and what I observe is that that did not reduce the options significantly, which in gas almost certainly means there's somewhere else that I can look first. So we're going to stop and we're going to try to find that somewhere else instead of just bashing through this side with pencil marks, which by the way, you can absolutely do and it will lead you to a solution. But I'm trying to get you to the most painless solution of this relatively spicy puzzle. So instead, let's see what else we have. We already noticed very early that these regions had become restricted. Maybe there's something here. Okay. I've talked in these walkthroughs before about this square configuration where you have a square of unfilled cells remaining in a box. So here, what digits do I still need? I need three, five, six, and seven. Well, I have a three and six in the row. So my three and six have to go into these two cells, but there's a three up here. So that's now a six. And now I need a five and a seven. Well, that's kind of interesting. That eliminates the six, seven option from these cells because I can't use a six anymore. So that's kind of a promising start. This six also eliminates six as a possibility from this cell. Doesn't quite finish things off, but it gets us somewhere. Interestingly, this row is approaching completion now. We only need one, two, and four, because we have this five, seven pair. We have three, six, eight, and nine. So we need one, two, and four. How does that interact with this cage? So 15 minus eight is seven. So to finish up our total of seven, we need four plus three, which is okay. Two plus five is not okay because there's a five in the region. Or one plus six, which is also okay. Interesting, that's a three, six pair. I wonder if that's gonna help us. This column is just as restricted as column three was, so this eight can't go in those positions, so eight has to go down here. And this is going to be a four, seven pair. Now in these cells, we're going to need one, two, four, and five, and we can't place a one because there's already a one there. Let's look at the top right briefly. We still need three, four, five, and seven. We have a four and seven in the row now, so this is going to become a three, five pair. Now we need four and seven. We can tell what order those go in by the seven here. And that's interesting because now we have this three, five pair, thanks to everything that we've done so far, which tells us this can't be a five because five has to be in one of these cells. So that's now a nine. Nine plus two is 11. We need four to finish off the total of 15. That four looks over here, gives us a seven and a four. We're very close to finishing. Okay, what do we still need? So here we just placed a four a minute ago. That eliminates the four from this cell. So this is now a one, one plus eight is seven. So we need to add six to make 15. And that resolves this three, six pair. This can't be a four. We need two, three, and five in this column. And we already have a two and five here. So that's a three, that's a five, and that's a two. And we can finish this entire region and resolve this pair. Let's see if we can do something similar over here. So here we need five, seven, and eight in the column. We have a five and eight in the row. Therefore, that's a seven, five, and eight. The eight is going to resolve this pair. And the six we just placed will resolve this pair. That's now a seven. Let's finish up. So we still need one, eight, and nine in these cells. They'll go there. We still need one, two, and nine in these cells. They'll go in this order. The nine will resolve the uncertain eight, nine that we had a moment ago. The remaining cell here is a seven, which fixes the five, seven pair. That in turn fixes the three, five pair. We still need an eight in that column. We need a two here and a three here. And that's how you solve playing Gooseberry by Philip Newman.